right, all right, all right. So what, what, what's going on there about in YouTube land? Got to walk y'all back to the game room. I am Professor Joe Kaysen. Uh I just want to, you know, just drop some crit, right, crit, right, crit, right, crit. Uh, I'm, I'm going to tell you guys what I've been noticing. Or what I've been noticing. I've been noticing, like, these digital games, you know, uh, you got the Baldur's Gate 3, uh, Allen Rake 2 coming out. A couple other games getting ready to be all digital. They done already started the process of forcing digital on people. But uh, I'm not even tripping on that. That's, you know, everybody, we already know that already. That's that's nothing new other than sun. That's nothing revolutionary. What, 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 what's, what's starting to, uh, what I'm starting to notice is that uh, they are, um, these digital prices are staying higher for longer. You know, like like a year or two ago, them digital games would come out, and within like a uh, a month, some, sometimes, well, most of the time, like three or four months. But sometimes, even within a month, some of them games were getting cut in half because they just wasn't selling. <laughs> you know, so now I think I think they found a remedy for that with the just we just gonna do digital only release because they have to cut the digital prices to compete with the resale market because most people are just buy the game, bam, they'll play it and then they'll put it back on the market, sell it for like you know ten dollars less than what they bought it for. Other people buy it, they'll play it, put it back on the market, sell it for ten dollars less than what they were buying it for. And then the digital games will have to compete with the physical games. But now that the 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 physical market is going away, they don't have to they don't have to slash their prices as fast as they normally would have. So I, I, I'm I'm taking note on that, man. And you know, I, before I keep going, I got to give a shout out to GameStop for coming back with these retro games because you notice. The moment GameStop announced that they was gonna start taking retro games again, guess what happened to uh, a lot of a lot of people, uh, a lot of people game game eyes and a lot of people uh, game and collecting apps. Guess what they noticed? The the soon as GameStop said they were gonna start taking retro games again, they noticed that some of those prices started to drop. The prices of uh, the 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 amount of their collections started to go down. I damn sure noticed it. If I noticed it, I know y'all noticed. <laughs> because see, when GameStop get back in the game, now the resellers, they gotta compete with GameStop. If you wanna move your product, you gotta compete with GameStop. This is why a lot of people was making all those shitty GameStop videos. They wanted GameStop to go out of business. I, I was telling y'all this three years ago. I said, man, everybody who doing these shitting on GameStop videos, these are resellers. And the only reason why they shitting on GameStop is because they can't go game hunting and then go into GameStop and 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 sell GameStop to game double for what they for what they uh, was able to pick up at a garage sale. GameStop is not going to let you finesse them off of your garage sale hunts. Nah, GameStop going to say, all right, bam, what it is, it's the Xbox 360 game, I get your ass 50 cent for it. So so you don't went you don't went to the garage sale, you don't paid a dollar for it, and get, now GameStop want to give your ass 50 cent. <laughs> Games, I say, I see you, I see you coming the same way you saw the person who sold you the shit at the garage sale coming. Um, no, nah, I give you fifty cent for this shit, and then uh, I, if you want store credit, I give you the dollar you paid for it, cause I'm just gonna turn around and just sell it for fifty for five dollars. So I give you the dollar you paid for it if you want store credit, but if you want cash, I give you that fifty cent. And GameStop wasn't wrong for that. But see, now you see when GameStop say, all right, man, we gonna start doing. Retro games again. Then now the resellers they gotta they gotta get more realistic with their prices because now you're competing with GameStop again. This is what's going on with the physical game. This is why people not even they trying to the, even these even these big retailers they trying to take GameStop out the <laughs> they trying to get GameStop out the picture, man. <laughs> okay, how are we gonna compete with GameStop? We just not even gonna release it physical. We're not gonna give them an option to buy physical. The, the the as long as we give them an option to buy physical, then GameStop is gonna always have a place in 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 whatever in this business that 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 we have. So we want to get rid of resellers all together. That's how these companies are thinking. We don't want nobody making no profit off of these off of this. This is why you gotta this 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 is why I think people gotta you gotta boycott these games. This is why I didn't get Baldur's Gate. First off, I don't, I don't got a being a being uh, hours to put into no no damn RPG like Baldur's Gate. That's the first thing. Then the second off, 
Yeah. I don't I don't really buy nothing for no seventy dollars. So but it, it's this Alan Wake, that's gonna be the that's gonna be the true testament. That's what they want to they Baldur's Gate was a success. Mega hit. If Alan Wake is a success, and, then, and we also gotta we also gotta be careful too. You gotta understand, you're talking about a billion dollar game in the industry. You're talking about a billion dollar game in the industry. You're talking about everything is being done by the numbers. I'm just trying to I'm just trying to open you guys' eyes up so you guys don't just because it's being reported as a success, because you, you used to have record labels, they'll drop, they'll drop a, a rapper CD, and then the record label will buy the first hundred thousand dollars, the first hundred thousand copies. They help the CD go platinum quicker. They help the CD have bigger first week sales. A lot of times, a lot of a lot of book authors do this. I don't do this. This is why, uh, you know, this is why you look at my reviews. Like the highest review I got on the book is sixteen reviews. Like it. <laughs> And you know, people come to me and be like, "Hey, man, why you don't why you don't fabricate reviews?" I'm like, "Why? My reviews give me the perfect amount of feedback to let me know how much work I need to do on my upcoming projects. So now nah, I'm gonna leave it just like that, man. And and at the same time, it's the energy I'm putting the energy out to the universe, letting the universe know I respect I respect the process of of coming up organically." So I'm, I'm not going to try to fabricate. I'm not going to try to, you know, fluff the numbers, even though I know that is a very effective tactic. That is, that's very, fluffing the numbers is very effective. So you got to be, be you got to be, you, you got to take that into consideration when we're looking at, when people are doing these stories, they're like, oh, man, this game is hot, man. This game is selling everywhere, everywhere, because everybody knows the old saying, monkey see, monkey do. Monkey see, monkey do. So uh, Alan Wake is going to be a, uh, that's gonna be a behemoth, but you know, I, I I would take the numbers with a grain of salt. I would take all this stuff with a grain of salt, cause once people start streaming and they start putting, you know, eh, the numbers, man, the algorithms, all that stuff, that man, like all this stuff is new to us, so we don't know how these people is playing, manipulating the stories and painting the narratives. But what I do know is, the digital games, they'll stand expensive for much longer. They're standing expense for much longer, and it, it's going to be real bad when the next generation come out. Th this is how they're going to force everybody to get subscriptions. They're going to force you to get subscriptions because now they don't have to compete with the secondhand market no more. So if we don't got to compete with the game stops and the resellers and all these other cats because they ain't got no physical products, we can keep the digital prices higher for much longer. Then we can... Uh, then we can... Uh, we can make we can we can make the subscriptions that much more appealing. And before anybody say, well, what about Steam? Steam be having sales all the time and all that that stupid shit. Steam Steam be having sales on old ass games, man. Yeah, they give you a sale on some old. They give you a sale on some um, from the 360 on the digital store. They give you a sale for some from the PS3. But we talking when that PS6 and that PS7 come out, watch out, watch out long, watch out long them new games stay high. Just like on Steam. Steam don't give you no sales until they see everybody else doing sales. But like I say, Steam also has to compete with what? The physical market. Once that physical market dry up, you're going to really see what these people do with these gaming services. We can't really judge the gaming. You can't, we can't really judge the, the, the streaming practices of these people because the, the, the physical market is still too strong. But once that physical market die out and they the only ones you got to go to, that's when they're going to show you their true colors. All right, man, y'all be cool, man. Don't go case. I'll holler at you.